today we will be discussing two topics that is 1952 mulki agitation and scenario after this is part one second topic is states reorganization commission and b r ambedkar's views on states reorganization so first of all if we talk about the 1952 mulki agitation as we have discussed in the previous classes mulki agitation has the basis of locals fighting for the claim fighting for the rights of employment so reasons violation of mulki rules as we have discussed how violation was done burgula ramakrishna rao the first democratically elected chief minister of hyderabad state has inherited all the problems or ill effects of the military government under jn choudhury and the civilian government headed by m vellodi an ics officer so these two administrations which started from 1948 september 17th till 1952 he has inherited all these problems so basically the problems in different spheres we have a different story but today we will be discussing about the problems related to employment because mulki agitation is nothing but the employment issue for example the pattern of settlement in hyderabad state in 1952 and before what has happened in hyderabad state the first and foremost aspect happening in 1948 to 1949 1949 and 1948 these two years are under military government jn choudhury administration entered into hyderabad state accession happened and now a new set setup has been declared that is the previous government the erstwhile administrators are mainly police department and army was completely reshuffled in the process even in administration for example in revenue administration or some other administrations those who are occupying the posts in under nizam government especially they have targeted and they have removed or unfavored whatever word you can use use they have unfavored the muslims the muslim officials and the supporters of nizam in this process what has happened one first imbalance has happened that is the imbalance in, in terms of religion many muslims lost their positions that is number one second imbalance is the major aspect is in 1949 immediately after velodi becoming the civil administrator we can see a shift in the administration erstwhile disposition or erstwhile government you have a Urdu as the official language. Now, with the new government, they have shifted to Telugu and English. Then, who will know Telugu or English? The people who have studied in Madras province. And in Madras province also, the Andhras. Today, if I talk about Andhras, it is Andhra plus Rayalasima. Present, today's Andhra Pradesh is Andhra in terms of Andhra in Madras province. They know Telugu and English too. So, they are favored. What has happened? Those who have studied in Urdu medium lost their jobs or not getting jobs. This is number one, the number two. Then, pre 1948, the contradiction was North Indian versus locals. Now, the contradiction has changed. This is the contradiction of Telugu speaking people only, but this is in the state of Hyderabad. In Telugu Hyderabad state, Telugu speaking people that is there are three languages as we know one is maharashtra regions of hyderabad state that is marathwada region they speak marathi karnataka kannada speaking people are in karnataka but the telugu speaking people what we call today as telangana the 10 districts which are reorganized into telangana state in 19 uh, 2014 this is telangana this telangana is telugu speaking area this telugu speaking area people are the people who are fighting for the mulki rules here because the contradiction contradiction here is between the telugu speaking people of telangana versus the telugu speaking people of andhra of madras province now that is why we have a very interesting slogan in this point that is idli sambar go back slogan what do you mean by idli sambar go back don't telangana people eat idli nowadays no this has got a very interesting story actually idli and sambar these are the breakfast of Madras province. As Andras are in Madras province, definitely this food habit is there in that region too. What has happened in Telangana? What was our breakfast? 
we used to have jowarki roti or many other things it's not idli sambar which was the breakfast of this region so what has happened idli sambar has become a symbol of protest those who eat idli and sambar are non locals that is why an innovative or a demarcating slogan has been invented or became so popular in this period that is idla sambar go back slogan apart from this there is another slogan known as go back to bejawada they did not speak go back to srikakulam i am talking about this now itself because the people of bejawada and nearby districts are krishna gunturu this region was so rich so popular in terms of culture in terms of their literary ability education so they have they have dominated the scenario we have seen many people coming from this region that is why at this point of time the slogan was go back to bejawada also so 1952 first of all if we talk about the importance of 1952 movement 1952 is the first and foremost movement in terms of telangana i would like to say that 1952 movement is the beginning of our agitation which paved way for the telangana state telangana state became reality in 2014 but in 1952 for the first time there is a discussion that we are different this is not based on geography or territory this is based on the people who are fighting for the rights in hyderabad state who are speaking telugu just a quick recap of the background this started in 1920s the first time for the first time what has happened nizam rashtra nizam rashtra andhra mahasabha was formed in 1930s first meeting in jogipeta as we know but before that in 1920s itself andhra janasangham nizam rashtra andhra janasangham was formed since then we have a separate identity as telanganaites telugu speaking people of hyderabad state fighting for the identity that is the beginning now come 1952 in 1952 what has happened finally the whole exercise all the or the conditions which was trying to make the identity of telanganaites has a very clear understanding in 1952 the first agitation has broken this first agitation is 1952 movement so i say the first telangana agitation is 1952 in 1952 non availability of qualified locals temporary basis all these things are there why the whole movement for anti mulki agitation started in 1952 there are limited number of jobs this is 1950s remember what you have is limited number of jobs limited resources at this point of view though the educated are also very less even the less very few number of educated people are not really getting the jobs in the government service because the reasons for all these things is first one in before 1952 and 1948 this is a period i am talking about the reasons the first and foremost reason is non availability of qualified locals what do you mean by qualified local for example you take the case of telugu we want a person who can write in telugu he we want a person who can write in english and correspond in the offices so who are learning or who was who were taught in english medium or knowing telugu as one of the subject to be taught in schools they will be getting jobs so automatically non availability is a major hurdle for the locals non availability of qualified locals is the first pretext they have taken then second one is temporary basis this is a haphazard arrangement remember another point 1948 to 52 what is happening the administration is completely a new one they don't know the real culture here what they are doing here so velodi or jain choudhury the administration is not a planned one this is just to take hyderabad state into indian union so you don't have the real what you call crux and intentions or philosophy how to mend the administration so automatically what happens you will recruit the people on temporary basis to so that way huge number of people came into hyderabad to purely as temporary employees but later they became permanent so temporary basis arrangement or temporary appointment on temporary basis is the second aspect third one is if the two things are not happening first two things are not there a person of a non mulki status wants to appropriate i am using the word appropriate or seize an opportunity an employment or a job in hyderabad state the best opportunity is 
to create a fake mulki certificate what they did was they have got fake mulki certificates many of the people i know many people who are t who taught now they might be 80s or 90s or might be 100 100 plus so some people are there till 90 plus people are there who taught telugu in hyderabad state still we can talk to them they are from rayalaseema regions they are from andhra regions they came here to teach telugu this is one but for teaching telugu or any subject or getting employment you need a mulki certificate how do you get it you create a fake mulki certificate by bribing or something or something and they got fake mulki certificates this is the third point and as we have talked about telugu replacing urdu as the medium of instruction you lose jobs so these are the reasons for losing jobs or not getting jobs in 19 by 1952 and the other aspect this is a political and other aspect like vishalandhra what do you mean by vishalandhra in 1912 itself in andhra region there was a movement We, they have created a word arava chakiri arava chakiri means arava means tamil we don't want to serve tamils this was a slogan of andhras in madras province so what they were doing was they were opposing and trying to unite telugu speaking areas into one as we have discussed before also so the vishalandhra concept has an impact here and they were trying to forcibly inject this vishalandhra concept into telangana in 1948 itself or 49 itself that is 49 in varangal one of the meeting a person came and he was promoting the concept of vishalandhra and many people who are the vishalandhra protagonists or the propagandists they are very very clearly understand that they feel that they are superior to telanganaites in terms of language in terms of literature in terms of their wisdom that is why even in 1930s suravaram pratap reddy has to bring out a book when a scholar in andhra said there are no writers or poets in hyderabad or tel hyderabad state nizamu rajyamulo kavulu poojyam that was the statement then what he did he has brought out golconda kavula sanchika with 350 plus poets from hyderabad state to prove that we have poets we write poetry we are well versed in telugu all these things this high handedness superiority and they th they felt that they know telugu and they are going to teach us the telugu uh, the language of telugu or even civilization even agriculture many of the people who settled in this period were thinking that they are more superior in agriculture they want to teach us they have to teach us make us civilize all these things have created a hatred for andhras during this period that is why even much before the agitation broke out in hyderabad state on mulki issue there was a discussion immediately after the formation of the, the newly de elected democratic government under burgula ramakrishna rao in the assembly within two months there was a serious discussion about the number of posts the mulkis occupying or non mulkis occupying we have a clear status we have clear statistics most of the people who are employed during this period are non mulkis not locals so with this what we understand is telangana i am talking about telangana as a core and hyderabad state as the whole were the the area this region was the victim of these political aspects between 1948 and 1952 then what has sparked the 1952 movement in 1952 this movement very interestingly we start 1952 movement and many of us whenever we listen to the 1952 movement we hear the version of professor jay shankar who was a young student and trying to student and just joined as a teacher next phase so he was witnessing all the changes happening in hyderabad state in his biography he has talked much about 1952 movement and how the movement has sparked and what was the psyche of the settlers in this period so this 1952 movement has a very interesting beginning as many of the movements need not start as a huge movement with a broad agenda like we want telangana as we have seen in the last phase also 14f was the agenda and finally the declaration of chidambaram of 9th december to uh, 2009 that 9th december 2009 declaration sparked with the agitation for 14f it's not the telangana demand as a whole so a small agitation can spark the 
bigger thing. It can unveil a bigger scope like that. In 1952, the incident or the person who is responsible for sparking is Mr. Parthasaradi, a divisional inspector of schools at Varangal. His high handedness, his understanding of his superiority, all these things are the reasons. Simply a small incidence, you can say small or a major. 180 teachers in this division were transferred en masse. Why? Because he want to reshuffle everything. In this entire process, he was the thick, he was in the center of the eye of the storm. Actually, why? Because one according to some reports, some of the writers has written that. They have written that a teacher in Varangal, a well versed and loud endeared teacher of Varangal, a Muslim died because of heart attack under this stress Parthasarathy has given. So, in 26th on 26th 1952, the first meeting of students with 4000 in strength was held at Varangal. This students meeting is very very important because the, the whole movement is starting in educational institution, teachers are not happy, the government has appointed a committee to look into that matter. So, as a result the students are also taking part in this movement. So, 4000 students gathered at a ground near Subedari, Varangal, they have started discussing about this whole issue and student action committee was formed in the hinter uh, afterwards with a, a man a student named Buchaya. You can say you can get this question in your examination. Buchaya was the first convener of students action committee at Varangal 1952 movement. You can get this question in the bits. 1952 movement the high handedness of Parthasardi hatred towards him in Varangal is not a isolated incident. It you cannot say it as an isolated incident. It started in Varangal, but with the students taking up the issue and making it as an important issue within three days it spread to other areas too. The student committee student action committee met the chief minister on 6th August. Why they have met? They have met chief minister Burgula Ramakrishna Rao discussing about the whole issue how the mulkis are getting a raw deal in employment in educational institutions and the one upmanship or high handedness you can say. So, immediately CM has promised that we will appoint a subcommittee and you call up the strike. The students immediately accepted to the demand, they have called of the strike, declared the strike to be called off, but still, but still the agitation spread to the other areas because it is not just a promise which can stop the strike. On 27th August, the strike was there. 27 to 15th September, it spread to the Twin Cities, Aurangabad, Bhongir, Suryapet, Mahbubabad, Miryalaguda, like all the other centers of the Hyderabad state, Telangana region. Though the chief minister has promised to appoint a subcommittee before, he did not appoint on time. And he took this whole lot of time between 6th and 26th, you can see, on 26th finally, he has appointed a subcommittee to look into this matter. So, on 26th, 27th August, I am going to the incidents, because incidents are not important, understanding the essence is important. On 27th August, first meeting at Hyderabad was held, then it was presided by Dr. Timaraju. It was advised by many local leaders, MLA like Gopal Rav Egbote and all these people. On 27th August, a lottery charge was there on the students at Varangal. First time lottery charge, take this point, this is an important. 27th August, the first lottery charge on students at Varangal. And in this lottery charge, 6 students were injured. On 27th August, lottery charge. Then, after this lottery charge, strike in Varangal. This is the first strike, lottery charge and strike. Immediately after the strike in Varangal, the whole movement has spread to other towns in Telangana. On 27th August, many schools were shut in Hyderabad, Hyderabad Twin Cities and agitation and agitation started, processions taken out and the course, now it is not a movement limited to Varangal. 
or the issue is limited to Parthasarathi or teacher's issue. On 3rd September, it spread to the other areas like Marathwada, Gulbarga and Bidar. And you can see now the spread, first Varangal, then Hyderabad Twin Cities, then the remaining Telangana region and Marathwada, Gulbarga, Bidar, the other areas of Hyderabad state. On 3rd September, very important, the agitation and firing at city college and nearby areas. This has changed the whole scenario. What has happened in city college? That is why this city college incident has become a point of discussion as the first agitation which has opened up new understanding about agitation. How the state responds to an agitation? Though the issue of mulkis is very important, though the issue of employment is very important, when people are trying to fight for the rights, their rights, their legitimate rights, the city college incident is the cut point. We will talk about city college, the importance of city college incident now. City college incident, city college, a famous college, a very old college in Hyderabad city was the main center of this agitation. The students of city college gathered nearby and they were agitating and the violent, violent incidents at city college has sparked the whole chain of things in the nearby areas too. It is not just 100 or 200 people, nearly 4000 people, 4000 students and youth gathered at city college and they have agitated for dem demanding this, uh, they, uh, they were sorry, they gathered and raising slogans against mulkis and the issues they have raised is mulkis should get the appointment, non mulkis should go back and these violent incidents cut and these violent incidents we have to understand the violence does not mean, violence does not mean it is one sided. Actually when the students were protesting, police also gathered and rest is very serious violent incident in the area. Not only here at VCD college, nearby areas like Afzal Ganj, Usmania University, sorry Usmania hospital and all these areas were completely into the agitating mode. Students in thousands were gathering at city college. So, at the city college when they have gathered, they were asked to disperse by the police department. They were asked to disperse by the police commissioner. The police commissioner himself was there present at that instance and pelting of the stones and firing and police has opened up firing upon the agitators at city college. That is why we call this incident as city college incident. So, first firing in 1952 movement, we can say city college incident is the first firing. You may get a question in your objective type discussion, objective type question papers that which incident is the first firing in Telangana station. That is first one is 1952 city college incident is the first firing. Again in 1969 movement, you have another move, another incident that is at Sadashipet, two martyrs were killed that is Shankar and Krishna that is 1969. So, first firing in city college. Unfortunately, we do not know the names of the victims. We will talk about what has happened in city college. The people who were killed were not given, the bodies were not given to the relatives. City College, Afzal Ganj and Usman University, these three centers. If I am saying City College, these three things together we have to understand. So, Kunda Lakshman Bapuji, a very what you call popular leader of the local area that is Telangana also came and tried to pacify. So, till here we can understand now City College is the center where the agitation is going on. So, firing at City College. Afzal Ganj, all these things made the people anger, students got angry and chief minister Burgula Ramakrishna Rao's car was also set ablaze. Then again firing on agitators. So, all these things <coughs> together we can see the agitation was the violent one, police were acting without any warning that is a very very important thing we have to talk about. We will talk about Jagan Mohan Reddy commission, then we will talk about what has happened and what are the findings and what the people were arguing against the police high handedness. 
So, dead bodies, the dead bodies of the people who were who died in the uh, in the firing were not given to the people, their relatives or kith and kin. So, what the police did was their bodies were burnt near Miralam tank. This they have told to Dr. J. Surya and Padmaja Naidu like people who came to Usmania General Hospital on the next day to see the bodies or the to uh, talk to the victims of the firing. So, what has happened? All these incidents led to a serious firing instance there the whole issue has become the more violent and now the agitation is not just an agitation with a few demands. Now, the whole thing has turned into an identity issue, law and order issue and like as we talked it is a basically a mulki issue. After this firing there was a committee appointed by the government Justice Jagan Mohan Reddy commission appointed on 9th September and they have submitted a report on 28 December. What they did? They collected gathered opinions from different sections about this firing. Many noted personalities like Dr. Jay Surya, Jay Surya son of Sarojin Naidu, brother of Padmaja Naidu. Dr. Jay Surya is a great democrat in Hyderabad state. Then all Hyderabad students union, an important student organization of Hyderabad. Then communist party of India, all these people have presented the views, their opinions, their understanding before the committee. And this Pingali Jagan Mohan Reddy committee has come to a conclusion finally, saying that firing was not unlawful. Why they justified a firing was in the report they have stated that there are 40 to 30 to 40 thousand students gathered at city college and they became so unlawful they are restless and the police with a limited number could not control them. If they do not fire things will not stop. So, finally, firing was not unlawful is the report. You can be asked in the examination what was the what were the points of Justice Jagan Mohan Reddy. Two points are there if you remember these two that is important. One is firing is not unlawful it means firing was justified. So, they gave a clean chit to police. Second aspect is compensation to the families of the dead and the injured the people who died in the firing should be given means the family should be given compensation and the injured should be given compensation. These two things are there as recommendations of Pingali Jagan Mohan Reddy. Nothing about the real sentiment of the people or the demand of the people. So, what we understand with this is Jenga, Pingali Jagan Mohan Reddy committee or commission is just giving the report only on the law and order issue of this whole thing that is the terms of reference not entire mulki thing. So, this is city college incident and Pingali Jagan Mohan Reddy commission. We will see what are the things happening after 1952, how the entire scenario is changing in Telangana, how the understanding of Telangana movement is beginning in Hyderabad state in Telangana region that is very very clear. Remember one thing any incident an incident can be an isolated one but any instance will not have a limited perspective. Once the instance is happening like firing, it will spread the political message to, it will spread the discontent to, it will have its beginning in terms of politics. In terms of politics means firing is a physical act, but firing will definitely create a new understanding or new consciousness in the people saying that yes, our demands were justified but we are getting the raw deal not even the government is looking into that. So, in the psychology psychological aspect or in the psyche of the people in the political sphere the whole thing is changing in Hyderabad state. We talked about Vishalandra in a limited sense, but we will see what has happened after 1952 firing or 1952 to 1956. In that sphere we can understand how the things are changing in Telangana state. The basic aspect of 1952 and after is Andhra Pradesh formation in 1956. So, what are the things happening between 1952 and 1956 we will take up. In 1952 we talk about the agitation till then there was no agitation. So, if we want to conclude this city college incident we have to conclude saying that 1952 is the first agitation of Telangana state where 
city college was the center a violent activity or violent happenings spread in the nearby areas and people became students became martyr youth became martyr really how many people died in 1952 incident is still a mystery because police said it is four at once then it said six so in this case 1952 incident has a clear cut demarcation in hyderabad state politics in terms of mulki agitation